I've won shirt white here. In the dollar store Giren's Greed, that is the SD Gundam G next for the SNES, there is a fun mechanic that lets you upgrade your various mobile suits once they reach level 6, or as the game calls it, their ace level, which is the unit's maximum level by the way. It does increase as you fight enemy units, but generally speaking, you get a full level up each time you destroy a ship. Every time your unit gains a new level, its speed improves and its autopilot improves as well, regardless of what type of unit this is. Additionally, if you are playing with the take down the master unit rule enabled, your master unit is going to start at level 6, allowing you to upgrade it right away. Now how does one go about doing that you might ask? Well, it is quite simple. Every time you resupply a unit that has reached its ace level and the unit in question does have an upgraded form available, it gets upgraded, gaining both an altered color scheme and some stat changes, though there are some exceptions to the latter. To do so, you obviously need a level 6 mobile suit and a ship with a sufficient amount of supply points, that is this number right here by the way, or a nearby base. Once resupplied, the icon of the unit is changed, denoting a successful upgrade. With all that out of the way, let's have a look at the various upgradable mobile suits. The standard Federation GM turns into the GM Custom from the AA3 Stardust Memory OVA. The Gun Cannon turns into Gun Cannon 2 from the MSV series. Should you upgrade the Gundam, it turns into its G3 counterpart, or as the game likes to call it, the magnetic coating version of the Gundam. Should you upgrade the Jagan, it becomes the Jagan Kai from Double Fake, which is neat. Going into the Ayug roster, the Rick DS turns into a Rick DS 2 from the Zeta MSV, the Mephis turns into Mephis Kai from the same design series, and the Gundam Mark II turns into the Super Gundam, as seen in the show Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam. Double Zeta Gundam gains its full armor Double Zeta upgrade, gaining its signature High Mega Cannon in the map attack form. The Hyakushiki gets turned into Hyakushiki Kai. Moving on to League Militaire mobile suits, the Gun Easy turns into a Gun Blaster, the Victory Gundam turns into a V Dash Gundam, and the V2 Gundam gains its V2 Assault Buster form. Within the Zeon lineup, the Zaku 2 can turn into a Zaku 2 Kai, the Gelgug can turn into a Gelgug Jaeger, the Zagok gets the Zagok E upgrade, and the Giradoga gets the Giradoga Kai treatment once upgraded. The Titans have only one upgradable mobile suit, the Hyzak, which can turn into a Hyzak custom. When playing as Haman's Neo Zeon, you can turn the Gaza C into Gaza C Kai, another design from Double Fake. A Cubele can be turned into Cubele Mark II in LPO Puru's colors, the Zaku 3 can turn into a Zaku 3 Kai, and the Zisa can be upgraded to the Sakai. The Crossbone Vanguard has only one upgradable mobile suit, the Burger Dallas, which can turn into a Burger Gyros. However, since this faction is coupled with the Zanskar roster, you also get units from there, featuring the Contio, which can get its rig Contio upgrade, the Gidlav, which turns into Jabako, the Zolo, which turns into Zolidia, and the Tomliat, which can be turned into Domatlia. There is another faction in the game, featuring the guest units from Gundam Wing and G Gundam, which shares the GM and the Jagan units from the Federation lineup, as far as upgradable mobile suits are concerned, alongside its very own Shining Gundam, which can be turned into the Gold Gundam or the Burning Gundam, if you watch the G Gundam in dub. In the DLC, or the Unit Pack, there's a bunch of new units added into the game's roster, among which being the Shenlong Gundam, that upgrades into Ultron Gundam, and the Gundam Deathside, which can be turned into Deathside Hell in its upgraded form. Anyways, those are all the units that can be upgraded. I'd say that while situational, the mechanic itself is a pretty good addition to the game, since it provides a degree of mecha fan service on top of giving you a slight incentive to not treat some of your units like cannon fodder. Though, let's face it, most of the upgrades aren't major enough to dissuade us from doing so either. At the very least, it does come in handy when you're playing the destroy the master unit rule. On a less related note, there's the season. So Merry Christmas everyone, and this is Shirtlad, signing out.